Today on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited, we're going to be installing SMI's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99243. This braking system is going to give you true proportional braking using the air supply from your motorhome's braking system. What this means is the harder you press the brakes inside your motorhome, the more it's going to apply the brakes inside of your vehicle. Included with your kit, you get a breakaway switch. So in an emergency event, where there is a disconnect between your motorhome and your vehicle while going down the road, the pin will be pulled and the brakes will apply, bringing your vehicle to a safer stop. And the indicator light on the back of our mirror lets us know when the brake pedal in our vehicle is being applied. As you can see here, our brake pedal just applied and our indicator is on. Now in order to get your vehicle connected to your motorhome, you are going to need a base plate, tow bars, and the appropriate wiring to get all of your lighting signals on your vehicle. We'll begin our install by mounting all of our units. We started by mounting the operating unit here on top of our fuse compartment. We mounted that by drilling some holes here in the top and just running a zip tie through it to keep it secure. Then we mounted our pedal actuator unit on our brake pedal. You want to locate it up high enough where it won't interfere with normal driving procedures while braking, but you want to position it low enough to where it gets good torque pull on your brake pedal. So you just have to find that right spot that's good for you. We've mounted ours about halfway up. You'll notice behind the brake pedal, there's an anchor point that we use the self-tapping screw that comes in the kit to put it against the firewall there. We did have to use a utility knife to cut away a little bit of the rubber to expose that firewall so we could mount that. You'll need to mount your LED indicator. This lets you know when your brake pedal is being depressed inside your motorhome. So you have a visual indication that your unit is operating properly back in your vehicle. The wire for this, you just run along the top and then down your A-pillow down towards your pedal. These things you can just pull down just to stuff those wires up in there. Same with the A-pillow over here, you can just pull that plastic trim aside to stuff it down and tuck it in along the way. Our LED indicator just sticks in place to the back side of the mirror with the double-sided tape on the back. Next you'll need to mount your mail connection point for your airline. We just mounted this to the bottom of our base plate bar and we just used some self-tapping screws to do that. Now these self-tapping screws didn't come included with our kit, we did have to provide those, as it comes with nuts and bolts. The nuts and bolts, however, are too short to drill holes and run through our base plate. If you had a mounting bracket you could fabricate yourself, you could use that included hardware. We mounted our breakaway switch on our base plate. There was already a tab provided on our base plate for your breakaway switch, and we used the hardware included, which includes a washer, bolt, and lock nut to secure it. Next, I routed my airlines. You'll receive a large amount of airline included with your kit. One of our airlines plugs into the male air connection that we mounted on our base plate, and this just pokes in right into the back connector. You just push it in place. I like to give it kind of a tug just to make sure that it's fully inserted. And we routed that up behind our grill over toward the in of our operating unit. The out of our operating unit, we came out with that. We ran it across to the opposite side to the grommet located just beside our brake booster. I did use a small drill bit to drill a little hole just to make that easier to get the airline to poke through. That airline ran in and then it connects to the port here on our pedal actuator. This again just plugs into that port. Just want to make sure you got it fully seated. And now for our wiring, we'll start at our breakaway switch. We routed the wires up behind the grill just like we did with our air hose. Now you'll notice that our wire color changed from the orange and blue at our switch to red and black. That's because our wiring wasn't long enough. This extra wire is included in your kit, so we just butt connected it on and extended it so we could reach our operating unit. You'll have two black wires on your operating unit. Doesn't matter which one you hook where, but one is going to connect to ground and the other one is going to connect to the blue wire from your breakaway switch. Our blue wire we extended with the black wire that comes in our kit. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those to length and connect those two together. So we're gonna go ahead and trim our wires down here. Strip both of those back. And then connect them with the butt connector. The blue butt connectors that come in your kit are non-heat shrink. So we're gonna upgrade our connectors to heat shrink butt connectors since this does live outside the vehicle and that'll help prevent any corrosion from occurring, keeping out moisture.
The other black wire from our kit is going to go to ground. So on our other black wire, we're going to strip this back. And we're going to connect a ring terminal to the other end. Now the ring terminal that comes in the kit is too small to go on to the stud on your ground wire. So we're going to be going to a larger size. We're going to be upgrading it to a 3 8 inch ring terminal. Now we'll disconnect the nut here with a 13 millimeter socket. Slide our ring terminal on and reinstall the nut. Now we'll prepare our fuse harness. You'll wanna cut that in half and strip back both ends. Now that we've got both ends stripped back, we'll take a ring terminal, again we've Enlarge that to the same size we did for our ground. Place that on one side. And on the other side, we're gonna put a butt connector. We also upgraded these to heat shrink. We'll now take the wire from our breakaway switch that was originally orange and black that we extended and now made it red. And you're gonna take the brown wire that comes in your kit. We'll cut those to length and then strip back each end We'll then twist those together. And we're gonna connect that to our butt connector from our fuse harness. Now on our positive battery terminal, we're gonna fold this back and take off the nut here with a 12 millimeter socket. We'll slide the ring terminal from our fuse harness on there and then reinstall the nut. We'll now use our heat gun to shrink down our butt connectors. Now you wanna make sure you don't have the fuse installed now because our brown wire that we connected would be live and we're gonna run that now. We're gonna route that across to the other side and through the hole in the ground where we routed our airline. We're now inside on our driver's side where we'll need to make our connections to our LED. So these are the two wires that come from our LED that we mounted on our mirror. We have our brown wire that comes from our battery positive terminal that we connect to our fuse harness. And this is your reed switch that comes in your kit. This is what activates your LED. We'll now make some connections to our reed switch. The black wire and the brown wire on the reed switch. We're gonna connect to blue butt connectors from our kit. So we're just gonna crimp those on. And our blue wire we'll be connecting to the three-way crimp terminal, which also comes in your kit. The LED that comes in our kit will connect the red wire to the black wire in our reed switch. And we're gonna connect the black wire to the three-way crimp connector. Now we'll connect our brown wire to the brown wire that we ran inside. Strip it back. Now you should have a little bit of extra black wire left over from extending your breakaway switch. We're gonna use this for our ground wire, so we're gonna strip back some of that. And that is gonna connect to the last leg on our three-way crimp. The other end of our black wire, we're gonna strip back. And we're gonna crimp on a ring terminal. Now, the stud that we're gonna be using for ground is larger than the ring terminal that comes in the kit, so we're gonna, again, be upgrading to that larger size. And now we'll connect our ring terminal from our black wire to the red stud located here on the left side. And we'll connect it just like that. We we'll use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the nut and reinstall it with our ring terminal behind it. You'll take your reed switch with the flathead screw here towards the inside facing up and slide it into the small bracket here on top of your actuator. And once you've got it slid in, you'll just tighten that screw down to hold it in place. Don't wanna over tighten it, just get it snug. Give it a light tug and we've got it installed. We can now bundle up all this wiring and tie it out of the way, and you wanna check all your wiring outside 
bundle it up and tie it out of the way as well. Next we'll need to tap into our brake vacuum booster line. So that's the line coming off of our booster here. We're going to be tapping into it about right here. Because you're going to want an area where it's fairly straight and where you have access to it. So this is going to be our best bet. So we're going to go ahead and use a pair of hose cutters. You can pick some up here at eTrailer.com. We're going to cut this line. Now, it might make a little bit of noise. That's just the vacuum bleeding off. If you've pressed the brake pedal recently multiple times, it probably won't make because you've already bled that vacuum off. Now that we've cut our line, there is a small bend in our line here. We're going to go ahead and cut that small bend out because we're going to be adding a T fitting, so we're going to need that extra room anyway. We'll now take the vacuum hose that comes in our kit. We're going to cut three small pieces. You want to make each one about an inch and a half long, roughly maybe two inches. And that's what we're going to be using to connect our T fitting. So we're just going to cut three of those. We'll now take our T-fitting, we're going to slide on one of the hoses that we cut. We'll then take one of the hose clamps that comes in the kit, we're going to slide it over that. The other end we're going to place onto the hose that we cut that's going toward our booster. To make it easier to get this hose to slide in, I would recommend you use some soapy water or some silicone spray. That'll just make it slide in a lot easier. We're now just going to slide those together. We can now run down our hose clamp with a Phillips head screwdriver or an 8mm socket. We're going to go ahead and run that down. Now on the other side, we're going to be connecting another one of our hoses. Then on the other side of our hose, we'll put our check valve. You want to make sure you put the white side into the hose. On the other side, we're going to place another piece of hose that we cut. And this final piece is going to connect to the other side of our tubing that we cut earlier. And a little bit of spray. Slide your hose clamp on, and then insert it together. You can then tighten down your hose clamp onto your line. We'll now take the rest of our hose. We're going to plug one end into the final spot on our T. We routed it across the back side of our engine, over to our passenger side. Here we can make our connection. We're going to cut off any extra that we don't need here. You do want to take another small piece just like we did on the other side. We're going to cut that. We'll insert the black end into the piece that we just cut, and then we're going to insert that onto our operating unit and the hose we routed over will just plug right in. We can test our system out now by inserting our fuse and pulling the breakaway switch pin. And you can see here the LED indicator turns on on the back of our mirror showing us that our cylinder is activating so we know our system's working properly. Now it's not going to activate fully because we haven't charged it up with air so we'll head over to our motorhome complete that side and we can charge it up for the final test. Now on our motorhome, we're behind the rear axle. You can really put this anywhere you want. This is the motorhome air unit. It consists of your air tank and the relay valve to get the air pressure back to your vehicle when you're towing it behind you. There's three connections we're going to need to make to our unit here. The one going into our tank here is our air supply. The one below the tank here is for our metered air and the one coming out of the bottom is the output that goes to our towed vehicle. You'll notice there's another hose here on the side. This is pre-installed. This just connects our tank to our relay valve down here. This entire assembly comes pre-assembled. So to get it mounted, all you need to do is 
find the holes on the bracket here, line it up with whatever mounting surface you're gonna mount it to. We mounted ours to one of our cargo compartments. Drill out the two holes and use the two included nuts, bolts, and washers to secure it. To make your airline connections from your motor home to your unit, you are gonna have to tap into the brake system and use the supply air and metered air that goes to your rear brakes. Now this is gonna vary depending on which motor home that you have. And then mounted back here by the hitch on our motor home, we have our female valve that will make the connection from our motor home to our Jeep. The output airline from the unit underneath, you'll just run that back here and plug it into the back of this valve. The mounting plate for the valve is pre-installed and comes included. There are two bolts that come with it, however, we decided to use self-tapping screws to get ours mounted. Self-tapping screws do not come with the kit. To finish up connecting our vehicle to our motorhome, now that we've got our braking system installed, we'll need to hook up our airline. The female side will connect to our vehicle, and the male side will connect to our motorhome. And lastly, we need to hook up our breakaway switch. That'll just connect to your hitch, and then to your breakaway switch. And with everything working properly, we're ready to hit the road. And that completes our installation of SMI's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited.